welcome to this week's game. I'm Becky Collins, a junior at Ferriero High School, and we're here on the sidelines at Memorial Stadium in Victoria, Texas. We're here to watch the Ganado Indians take on their Ferriero Bobcats. Go get them, cats. Hello, I'm Kylie Borden, a senior at Ferriero High School. Tonight, the Ferriero Bobcats take on the Ganado Indians at Victoria Stadium. Go get them, cats. Welcome to the regional finals of Class 2A. The Refurio Bobcats take on the Ganado Indians in a big ball game, highly anticipated. Again, these are two outstanding squads coming together to face each other, and it's going to be a whole lot of fun. I'm Stephen King along here with Albert Flores. Albert, tell me a little bit, a little bit about this Ganado Indian team here. Well, on the offensive side, we need to keep an eye on Brian Hurt, the quarterback, Doug Holt, the running back, and the wide receiver with a lot of speed, Greg Lee, number 21. So apparently they're a team that does like to throw it down the field a little bit. Team's coming onto the field right now. The Bobcats make their way. Steve, one thing to point out there is we see the flag barrier. We uh, visited with Coach Harris this week in the past Coach uh, Marshall had been the uh, flag bearer for the Ferriero Bobcats. Being that Car uh, Coach Marshall had that uh, slight stroke, a senior is designated as the flag bearer of each game since that has happened. So here we have a senior bringing out the Ferriero Bobcats on the field here in Victoria tonight. Well, I know one thing for a fact. It's going to be a great ball game. Uh, these teams are coming in uh, with outstanding records. And uh, who knows? going to be lots and lots and lots of fun. We say outstanding uh, record. Ganado comes into this game undefeated. Referio with, with only one loss. They're, uh, the final uh, state rankings had Ganado ranked number five. Referio ranked number six. So we are definitely uh, in a true matchup as far as the regional finals go here, Stephen. I'll tell you one thing. This is, is going to be real exciting. Right now, you see there on the field, middle of the field, captains discussing it will be getting the ball, who will be defending, and from where. Real quick, while we have an opportunity here, I would like to go ahead and thank some people that make this possible, make it available for we here at Bay Area Studios, along with Mr. Ron Jorgensen, uh, make this possible to bring it to you. And of course, those are the sponsors. Excel Sports Therapy, First National Bank, Ben Jones Hardware, More coming. <laughs> Dr. Tim Rainey, DDS. Friends of the Refurio Bobcats. Folks at Golden Fried Chicken. Mid Coast Lease Service. Moya's Mexican Food. Refurio Motor Company. Refurio Pharmacy. Texaco Gas. That's the Go Market at 719 Victoria Highway. The TPR Arena. Whataburger, Advantage Publishing Company, and TCI Cable. We're getting more sponsors each and every week, and we want to thank them, and I'm glad that they are participating. As you can see, the Indians are going to be kicking this ball away. Refurio will be receiving to open this regional final game here in Region 4, Class 2A. Kick is going to go deep to open up the ball game. Taken at the seven-yard line. Cuts it upfield. He will be taken down. Number 22, the man on the stop, Trey Lechuga. I believe that was number 34 on the return. Is that correct? That's correct. Norman Moya. Moya. I'm seeing uh, Furios in their traveling white jerseys while you can see the Ganado is in full maroon, up and down. 
I'll tell you what, Stephen, as we look from up above the press box, that reminds me of the uh, Alabama team down there. Kind of has a, yeah. <laughs> and you look at some of the size of some of these players, and you would think that is the Alabama team out there, and we'll point that out to you in just a few moments. Michael Brown, the quarterback, under center to start this ball game off at the 20-yard line. Going to hand it off to Hollins, right side, tries to turn it up, gets 5-6. On the stop coming up underneath, number 10, Heath Burris. And uh, I tell you one thing, that was good. He followed his blockers well, but he kind of he kind of took out the blocker to get to the running back. So again, it's a gain of six yards, and I'm sure anybody will take a gain of six yards on first down. So it'll be second down and four. See, we're going to keep an eye on our linebackers there for the uh, Ganalo Indians. They've come into this game as their leading tacklers. Definitely some tough stuff. Going to go Bisbee on second down and four. Bulls his way forward. He's going to get to about the 29. He should be short by about a yard. Good tackle there by number 33. You just mentioned it a moment ago, the linebackers, Doug Holt. Doug Holt, the other uh, linebacker being number 62, Tommy Chris down there. And they are really the key to this Indian defense. The way they go is the way this game will, will go, I feel, tonight, Stephen. Again, if you just joined us, 0-0. Zero to zero. We're in the opening drive of the 2A Region 4 Finals. We have a, do we have a penalty flag, possibly? What, what's going on here? I think we have a flag coming from the sideline here, line judge. And uh, possibly the receivers might have lined up offside and did not check up with the outside official. And if that's the case, that really will hamper a third down and one. It is. It's going to be third down and six now. Definitely not uh, what Coach Harris would want to start this ball game. Stephen, you know, as I pointed out the uh, uniforms of the Ganalo Indians, you pointed out their size. You look at number 51, Weatherdick there at 245, and Benavides number 75 at 220. Those are some big boys here in the front line on the defense side of the ball. Absolutely. Don't forget Galindo, 79, at 260 pounds. On third and six, Brown keeps it himself. Works it outside to the left. He's going to try and turn it up. Gets close to the 30. Going to be, I believe, just short, so he still should be short of that first down. Good pursuit by the Indians. You see number 32, the man coming off the very bottom of that stack, Timmy Alvarez, a 164-pound senior. But it showed good speed getting out there and not allowing Brown to really get that corner. Steve, I'm trying to pick something up as far as the offensive line goes, something we hadn't seen in the past. It looks like Refrio has Sullivan playing guard along with Adrian Gonzalez at the tackle, so they're going with their st strength there. We're, that's something we're going to have to keep an eye on in the next offensive uh, series. Kicking the ball away. On fourth down, they were short. It's going to go deep all the way down to the 22, 23 yard line, taken by number 21 for the Indians. Reverses his field, tries to find something there, but he'll be taken down at the 35. Again, that was Greg Lee. 156 pounds senior back deep to receive good punt good coverage but they do get to the 35 so it'll be first down and 10 uh, for this powerful offense again they are undefeated this year and we know that they can put some points on the board let's see what the defense can do two receivers split to the right side gonna be a pitch to the outside man left side tries to work it back up get some good powerful running Again, that was number 33 on the carry. I think Michael Mascoto was the man on the stop, but again, number 33, Doug Holt did a great job with some power running, a little smash mouth football there. Steven, we look down at the offensive line. They come into this game averaging 220 pounds, the Ganado Indians offensive line average per man. Got a little bit of beef over there. On second down, six. Quarterback looks, he's going down the sideline. He is looking, it's gonna be great coverage. Great coverage, I'm telling you right there. Roman Smith couldn't do anything better. If he could have made the interception, it would have been better, but to number 21, Greg Lee, kind of turned himself into a D-back and broke up the interception by Roman Smith. Well, we saw number one, Michael Brown, from that safety position come over and assist there also, Steven. That's gonna be the key. They have got to shut down Greg Lee, number 21, tonight to stay in this ballgame there for the Bobcats, too. Ryan Hurt 
Got a good arm. Will definitely go down the sideline. Quarterback for Ganado. He wants to throw again. He's going to roll to his right. So here comes the pressure. He is going to find. Oh, incomplete. Incomplete. Again, you said it. The same man was the intended receiver. Number 20 was following him. That's John Cancino. But Greg Lee obviously is the focus receiver of this squad. It'll be fourth down. So two defensive efforts. First by Ganado, then by Refurio. Three downs and out. So they're kind of feeling each other out just now. Going to punt this ball away. He'll get it away right about his own 30 yard line. Nice high kick. Going to come up a little bit short. Taken at the 30 yard line by Moya. It'll be a fair catch and first down and 10 for Refurio. During the transition, everybody comes out and Let's see. I'm trying to see. Yeah, there's still Mike. It's still Michael Brown at quarterback. Having trouble seeing a few things over here. Brown hands off to Bisbee. It's right at the middle. Power running. Turns. The one thing about you, the one thing you see about Bisbee is he knows which direction is going. His body may turn left, right. He might go backwards, but he knows what north and south is all about. He will continue going forward no matter what. And he's five foot ten, 225 pound junior. Going to see a lot more of this guy. He's going to have an incredible future. Well, that particular time, there was some good blocking up front on the Refrio Bobcat offensive line as they fired out on the uh, Indians. Created a nice little running lane there for Bisbee. Brown gives it to Hollins. Right side. Oh, he's going to be dragged down. Good tackle. Number 75 on the stop. Uh, Fabian Benavides, he's a, that senior, 220-pound uh, defensive tackle. Did a great job just grabbing a hold of Holland and not letting go. I'll tell you one thing, that's a heck of a, heck of a grip. Well, he shot that gap there, Stephen. Uh, no one really could get a clean block on him. He come in between the uh, guard and tackle there and took a right angle. As, uh, that was the key to that particular stop there. But the big thing was Holland does get the first down, though, and that's okay. what's more important right. is moving those chains. Brown on first down goes to Bisbee. Bisbee fights someone, bulls his way over another. Number 10 kind of uh, <laughs> meet Mr. Bisbee, Heath Burris. I tell you, Heath is no small guy, 175 pounds sophomore, but uh, Bisbee pretty much just uh, put a footprint right in the middle of his chest. Also assisting on that particular stop was number 62 from the linebacker's position, Tommy Tristan. Two receivers splitting out wide to the left side. That's Roy Sanders and number 19, Pushan Brown. Brown rolls. He's got pressure coming from behind. He doesn't know. He got great running. Avoids, eludes the pressure from behind to get good yardage. On the stop, number 79, Anthony Galindo. But I tell you one thing, it seemed like they were going to catch him. It seemed like they were going to catch him, and they didn't actually catch him. It's another first down. Move the chains for Refurio. Well, on this second offensive series of the game, Stephen, the offensive line of the Refurio Bobcats have made some adjustments, and they're really keying off on their blocks and getting some good execution there as far as the offensive line goes. Sean Brown and Billy Bailey are out to the left side. Again, two backs, Bisbee and Hollins in the backfield. On first, a little bobble. Ball is going to go on the ground, Ball, but it's picked up. It is picked up by Refurio, and he'll be taken down at the 45-yard line. I saw a penalty flag, but uh, I don't know what the call is going to be, but Refurio will maintain possession of the football, that's for sure. You know, Stephen, that bobble wouldn't have been there and hand off to the right side of the line. There was a huge hole for that back to run on. They're going to talk about this. I think the officials want to be absolutely sure on what's going on here. Also, they're going to measure. Again, that'll play in the decision of a coach on if he will or will not take penalties. Actually, we don't even know what the penalty is just yet. But you saw the yellow flag. Was it, wait a minute, let me ask you this. Was it a yellow flag or was it a hat? Let me ask you that. Was the hat being thrown in there as a marker stating that there was a fumble? Well, that's a good point, Stephen. Uh, 
Good thinking on your part there, because uh, about as the time you mentioned that, it also occurred to me that that could have been the mark of a fumble. Yeah, because it definitely was fumbled, and I don't see them making any gestures at all towards okay. the penalty. So that must have been what it was, a, a, a hat being thrown in there saying a fumble took place on that yard line. Well, this uh, officiating crew has worked together several games in the playoffs, from what I understand. They're out of the Houston Captors, so they've worked together a good while as far as playoff games go, Steven. Brown will be just short by about a foot for the first down. He'll give it to Bisbee. Bisbee will get that first down. No doubt about it. Gets it up to about the 31-yard line, just kind of jumps over the pile. Good surge by the offensive front by Refurio. See the last man getting up there. Dan Sullivan, 275-pound senior. Dan is big man to run behind. Makes, makes uh, the running backs <laughs> make their lives pretty good. On first down, the ball's actually going to be spotted about the 32-yard line. Brown's going to try and find Norman Moya in the left side. He does a great job working his way forward. Gets to about the 21. Should be enough for a first down, 11-yard gain. Ball came out kind of wild, but Moya handled it fine. Turned it up the left side of the field. And uh, unless we have any markers or anything, I think we're going to have a first down. Steven, I was watching Doug Holt. But, wait, but I think there was. Okay, there is a marker, but it's an offsides against Donado and uh, good officiating there because I saw it too. I mean, they were really trying to guess that count. Right. They were really look, trying to guess that count. Look at the linebacker there, number 33, was up in the gap trying to anticipate the uh, snap. And I believe that's uh, what the call was on that right side of the defense side of the uh, Donado Indians there. Charviro is putting something good together here on the 21 yard line. First down and 10. Their second drive of the ball game. First drive, of course, will stop three downs and out. But this time, got something good going on. Hollins, right side. Turns it back inside. Going to get to about the 16. Then also he takes a nice shot. Two guys put a good lick on him. Number 10 and number 75. Number 75 being Fabian Benavidez and number 10, Heath Burris. And you saw Holland's doing some great things, getting good yardage, and also get knocked back about a yard. Well, you mentioned Sullivan a few minutes ago as one of the main blockers for the offensive line there. This time, number 60, Tim Combe had an outstanding block along with Will McKinney from that center position to create a little running lane there for Hollins. Gets about four. It'll be second down and six. Keeper, quarterback, left side. Good job by the outside, outside man for Ganado, number 35, if I'm not mistaken. That is his number. That's Kyle Pear, and he did just did an excellent job staying at home. Broke down, was in control when he went for the tackle on quarter on the quarterback Michael Brown. Well, Kyle Pear has come in now to play that linebacker position, and that was just an outstanding read on his part to try to turn that play back in. Allow his pursuit to catch up with Brown, and that was the difference in that offensive play there. Going for very little gain, of any at all, Stephen. It will now be third down for Refuria. Ball at the 16-yard line. Bisbee up the middle, powerful running. Once again, he should, should be, I think he definitely has that first down that time. Will. Well, they're looking around. I haven't got an official ruling here yet, and they are going to go ahead and bring out the chains and measure this one. Again, good powerful running by Bisbee following the uh, big front line. And uh, actually looks a lot closer than I thought. He may not have got it. Well, Stephen, on this series, we've seen Refrio pretty well content to allow the strength of their offense uh, kind of control the ball. It's going to be fourth down. It is short by about a foot. Do they want to bring in Cancino and think about a field goal attempt or not? I think they're going to talk about it. Refurio takes a timeout here. It's, it's the first quarter. Zero to zero the score in the region four of class 2A. 339 remains here in the first. See if we can get this underway again. 
Coach Harris wants to talk about this. He wants to be sure that everybody's on the same page. They're going to go for it on fourth down. They want to make sure that everybody knows what's happening on this play. You know, Steve, one thing I'd like to point out here on this uh, timeout, that Ganado comes in with a state best winning streak of 17 games. That's uh, something that was pointed out to us in the uh, pregame show. With seven, were they state winners last year? Uh, no, that's just uh, they won regular four, season. Regular season. I got and you. And this is continuation in, in '96. They're 13 and 0 coming in this ball game. So they won four last year, 13 into this game During here. The, oh well, interesting. That's a. a the best record in the state is what we understand of uh, 17 straight wins. On fourth down and just short, Bisbee, big first down. I think we knew that was going to happen. Ball got down to the eight-yard line. He was taken down from behind. Number 62 jumped on his back, Tommy Tristan. But, uh, you know, when you have someone with the, ca uh, the caliber of Bill Bisbee in the backfield, there was yeah. some great blocking also up front there, Stephen. They really fired up on the uh, snap of the ball and just created some room there for Bisbee to use his size and strength to get that first down on. A big first down for the Bobcats here late in the first quarter. Brown again has Bisbee and Hollins in the backfield. Everybody gets set and situated. He's going to go Bisbee this time. No, Brown actually a keeper, and he is going to be dropped for a significant loss of about four yards. There was super pursuit by the entire Ganado defense, and I uh, really just never had an opportunity to even get it outside. Steve, was that going to be a little counterplay there, you think, uh, the way Brown know. handled I, that ball? Possibly, possibly. I don't know. I was trying to look where Hollins was, you know, if he was going to come from an opposite way, but, but it really doesn't matter because the penetration was so deep. The whole play just really was shot. So it'll now be second down, and they're going to give him some serious forward progress right there. Steven, we see number 65 in there now on the defensive side of the uh, ball for Ganado. He normally plays offense. Now they're using him for his size on the defensive side. 290 pounds, Chad Green. Holland's right side tries to, yes, he does get the corner. 10, bulls his way. I saw a penalty flag fly. It gets down to the 7, but you saw the flag fly. Looked like if Holland's can turn that corner, Stephen, he might have had a touchdown there. At, uh, we'll wait and see what the call is, but that was great pursuit on the defensive side of the ball. They have some quickness on the uh, interior line there as far as the defense goes for the Indians. There was a good block right there at the line of scrimmage on the end to free up Hollins to get the, at least the yards he did. But uh, they're discussing it, and uh, also we have a player down on the field for Refurio. Is that James Hayward? Was he in the ballgame, number nine? I failed to pick that one up, Stephen, but uh, Hayward did uh, have his ankles taped, so that might be him, and there's a call. Procedure against, if you're, yes, that was Hayward, but he's getting up right now. He might have got a stinger, but if that nullifies the run by Hollins, the illegal procedure, so it'll be a five-yard penalty, of course, I believe they will take it. Unless, of course, they're concerned about downs of some kind, but... Uh, Let's see. Decisions, decisions, decisions. Again, there, the official call is a legal procedure against the Bobcats. Second down, they'll move it back five. Well, Refurio cannot get in a situation where they're going to go down deep into someone's territory, get in scoring position into the red zone, and then pull themselves out of it with penalties. They've got to play smart ball uh, and just concentrate. Just concentrate on the job at hand. Don't get caught up doing silly things. On second down, Brown. Let's see what the play here. He keeps it himself. Here comes pressure from the left side. He wants to get rid of it. You know, he turns up the speed, gets to the 14-yard line. Number 42 was in pursuit all the way from the opposite side of the field. Again, that is Jarrett Lambert. But uh, as soon as I thought Lambert was going to catch him because I thought Brown was going to throw him. For him to throw, he would have had to slow up just a bit. But then at that point, did you see that burst of speed 
you know, all of a sudden he just got some separation between he and Lambert. That was a great little run by Michael Brown. One thing about it, the uh, burst of speed, as she called it, if he's able to stop and kind of throw on the run, Bill, Billy Bailey, number 81, was streaking down the sideline, Stephen, wide open. No one would, picked him up at all as he came off that line of scrimmage, number 81, Billy Bailey. Brown, once again, he wants to keep it. He's going to go around. He tries to cut back outside. This time, the tacklers are there for Ganado. The Indians doing some great swarming, great pursuit, not allowing Brown to get to the outside. And apparently, if he was trying to throw, there was good coverage downfield, too, because uh, you could consider that somewhat of a coverage sack also. Yes, yeah, Stephen, just a few plays ago, you mentioned something about the penalty. What the referral cannot allow it to do as far as the, the middle mistakes go? Well let's, well, let's see. Cancino from 34 yards out. It's high enough. It is wide to the right. So a drive wasted by Refurio. They got deep into the territory of the Indians and just couldn't capitalize. So with just over a minute to go here in the first quarter, the score is 0-0. Zero to zero. The Refurio Bobcats and the Ganado Indians tied in the region for Class 2A Finals. Well, that penalty, as I was pointing out, so that kind of just took the uh, air out of that drive there as they had everything going their way offensively, and then the penalty set them back in two plays, go for not, brought up that field goal attempt from Casino to win the straight. Going to go to the first man up the middle, number 33. That's Doug Holt. Finds the middle. Gets a couple three yards. James Hayward apparently shook off whatever he had uh, earlier. Like I said, I thought it was probably just a little quick stinger, and he is back in the ball game. Also, they do get a couple yards, so it'll be uh, second down and eight. Also assisting on that particular play there was number 61, Winston O'Connell on the uh, referral defense side of the ball. Coming up, the quarterback, number 19, Brian Hurt senior leader for the Indians. Get to the first man once again. There's nothing. There. Fumble. Fumble balls on the ground. And it looks like the Bobcats have it. The Bobcats have the ball. That's for sure. I, did you see a penalty or was that another fumble that, marker? That was the uh, marker. Steve, uh, okay. There. that's. I'm going to keep an eye on that. They're trying to mess with me tonight. Yeah. That's uh, number 72. I'm not too sure on that one. Looked like Sullivan there, the uh, man that stripped the uh, ball carrier. Sean home. Sullivan. Yeah, that and I think Hayward also. I might have been Sullivan. I'm not sure. But again, it was pulled out. And he, you really saw that they stood him up and then went for the ball. I mean, they went for the strip. Well, here's another golden opportunity for the Bobcats to try to put some on the board here late in the first quarter, Stephen. Michael Brown from the 25 yard line, first down and 10. Bisbee up the middle, gets four, possibly five. I'll tell you what, you see that matchup up front. There's some nice matchup as far as size goes there we see uh, Will McKinney going against uh, is that the end of the quarter yeah that will be the end of the quarter again the score zero to zero the Refurio Bobcats and the Ganado Indians tied scoreless in the region four class 2a finals that first quarter was brought to us by our sponsors Excel Sports Therapy Gulf Coast Rehabilitation Excel Sports Therapy supports the Refurio Bobcats and Woodsboro Eagles we offer a full physical therapy service for all outpatient and inpatient needs. Call us at Refurio Memorial Hospital, 526-2321. Also, First National Bank of Refurio is your home-owned full-service independent bank that works hard for hard-working people. As the largest financial institute in Refurio County, the First National Bank of Refurio has been servicing the county for over 74 years. The First National Bank of Refurio is an equal housing lender we will be here when you need a bank. We support the Bobcats as they fight their way to the 2A state championship. Ben Jones Hardware has been backing the Bobcats and serving the Refurio County for 25 years. We specialize in Whirlpool appliances and can meet your lawn and garden needs with Yazoo and Lawn Boy brands, not to mention a full line of hardware. Come see us and remember, at Ben Jones, we care, we repair. And Dr. J. Tim Rainey, DDS. He and his staff wish to congratulate the Refurio Bobcats on their way to the state championship. It is exciting to see our young patients compete on this level. Be a winner in dentistry, too. Let us serve your dental needs. 
Getting ready to start this second quarter. Referees have a little meeting here. Make sure everybody's on the same page. We're on the right line. How many timeouts you got? I don't know. How many timeouts you got? I don't know. Little meeting of the minds. Well, meetings of the minds, as you point out, Stephen, also occurred on the referral sideline because they got their offense right now rolling pretty good. They're executing a little bit better than what they did on that first drive. They're getting some yardage as far as the running attack goes, and that's all a positive side for the Bobcats right now. It'll be second down to start this second quarter. Bisbee, this time he's met. He does get about a yard or two, but Bisbee, man, <laughs> Bisbee never goes down, but he couldn't get any more, couldn't get any more forward progress. The, uh, I believe, linebackers came up once again and just using good leverage just held Bisbee up. You know, the defensive side of the ball for the uh, Indians has got some quickness there. They they take on their blockers rather nicely and stand them up, and that's uh, the reason right there. Bisbee really never had a chance to get any yardage there. They just kind of plugged up everything on the line of scrimmage. In the backfield, Cedric Wills and Bisbee. They worked their way forward on third down again. That was Bisbee, but I believe he will be. Is he going to be short of the of the first down he needs? Yes, it will be. It'll be fourth down. Another decision. Another decision for Coach Harris. Timeout taken by the Refurio Bobcats. In the same situation last time, they had fourth down, and short. They went forward with Bill Bisbee and got it. Now this time they have a little bit longer. It's not as short as previous. And uh, a <laughs> very interesting uh, Indian there, I have to say. <laughs> Quite a defined uh, schnoz, we'll say. <laughs> well, here we see the uh, Bobcats come back on the field. They still seem to be talking about what their uh, scheme's going to be here, Stephen. Do we see John Casino out there? I don't believe so. I don't think he's out there yet. I think they're going forward on fourth. They have a little bit longer. Last time it was about fourth and a foot. This time it's about fourth and a yard, yard and a half. They've been very successful with Bisbee, we'll see. We got Bisbee and Cedric Wills in the backfield. Don't, of course, do not forget the quarterback, Michael Brown, who'd love to try and turn it up himself, also given the opportunity. Will McKinney, the center, goes up. The rest of the line follows. Brown under center. Fourth down, Bisbee up the middle, boom. Fights his way forward, big first down. And you've seen it. You've seen it all year long. When they either clutch one Two, three yards. Bill Bisbee's been the man. Well, you mentioned Will McKinney there. He just fired out when That's he right. snapped that ball. Great you block see, in there. By the time Bisbee had, had actually made contact with him, but he had already gotten the first down. That's strictly because of the offensive line just blowing out the defensive front. I believe also on that same side of the uh, blocking side there was uh, Tim Cone, number 60, uh, blocking along with Will McKinney there, as we pointed out, Stephen. Absolutely, on first down. Ball's about the 14-yard line. Going to go Hollins. Nothing there. Nothing there. Maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage, but as you can see, <laughs> not the tallest man in the world, number 79, Anthony Galindo, but uh, stocky, 260 pounds, got in the way of Hollins, and he was not going to let himself get pushed backwards. We have a legal procedure call against. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, there <laughs> you go. I mean, I'm not happy with the call, uh, but on a procedure call, it is going to go against Refiro. Are they going to move him back five yards or take the take the down and no yardage? Let's see. Well, Stephen, one thing to point out. Remembering from what happened in the previous series, they had the drive going. They got a penalty, kind of took the air out of them. We'll see what this penalty does right here. Legal like procedure, five-yard penalty will be declined. They're going to go ahead and take the no-gainer on first down, so it'll be second down and 10. What's the uh, line of scrimmage there, Steve? Can you I believe we're here? on the 14-yard line. Ball is on the ground, and I cannot believe it. There they go, the Indians falling on top of it. Opportunistic Indians. Number 33, Doug Holt. Ball's on top of it. He, he just smelled that ball out and was on, on it quicker than most people even knew it was on the ground. Trouble with the transfer between Will McKinney and Michael Brown when he was bringing it up after the snap. It just 
just slipped right out of his hands the way it looked like to me. Well, that's another, uh, can we say another mental mistake there, Stephen, on that well, one? Or? you know, what I, it, you'd, 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 think, you'd think it could be. And, uh, again, I'm not on the field seeing what's going on, but it is going to hurt. It will hurt. Scoring opportunities. You cannot get within someone's red zone and not get at least an opportunity to put points on the board. Going over the right side, receiver end around, turns it up the field. 30, 40, 50. Roman Smith holds on tight. He will be pulling down at the 29-yard line. And thank goodness for Roman Smith because, as you can see, no other Refurio Bobcat was even close to coming into the screen for a while. Number two, Roman Smith did an outstanding job not giving up. A huge first down. Great, huge play. Big play for Greg Lee, number 21, and the Ganado Indians. But Roman Smith, again, never gave up. You know, they take over the ball after that fumble recovery by Doug Holt. They come out with a trick play there, and Greg Lee just has great room to run with the ball. And it's not so much trick. It's a basic reverse, you know. It's, it's nothing too crazy. But uh, apparently they saw something and said, hey, they are leaving themselves vulnerable. And uh, they took advantage of it. And, of course, Greg Lee's quite an athlete. Outstanding reputation coming into this game. Pitch, left side. Works his way forward. John Cancino on the stop. Gets about four or five yards on the play. That was number 33 carrying and of course, Doug Holt. Senior, 190-pound running back. Gets to the 25. You know, Stephen, Doug Holt comes into this ball game having rushed for over 1,300 yards for the year, so he has been the main running back for the Indians as far as getting into this regional final goes. They have to key. Brian Hurt, the quarterback under center. Holt once again. Oh, boom! Hayward. Hayward comes flying in there. Oh, my goodness. See Doug Holt kind of adjusting his helmet there after <laughs> that hit, Steven. <laughs> you know, every game we do, the Refrio Bobcats linebackers come through one way or another. Last week, Michael Moscoto had that big hit. Right now, here in the second quarter, James Hayward has a big hit. It will be third down. They lose about two on that play. Huge hit by James Hayward. That was so quick. And that's you know that people are looking at James Hayward, six foot on 235 pounds. There's some there's some college people want a little part of that boy. He's doing an outstanding job. Quarterback rolls, great fake. Good. Oh, late pitch, but he will get the pitch down, but he will get a couple yards, but James Hayward stays with the play along with Moscoto, the two linebackers, and that was odd. The quarterback was looking. You see Hurt talking to him right now, number 14, uh, Barry Dunlap. He goes, where were you? But, uh, you know, he actually got the pitch off and got by the first man. But uh, the pursuit by the linebacking core brings him down. That was outstanding pursuit there by the referral Bobcats defensive uh, side of the ball. We see the band kind of firing them up a little bit there, Stephen, from Absolutely. the referral side. Huge play, fourth down. Need a few, need about four. Quarterback pumps, throws, looks down the field, overthrown on fourth down, incomplete. It will be Refurio ball. And the man was open. Number 33, Doug Holt was the intended receiver, but uh, the defense holds. The defense holds. They fake the inside reverse to Lee, trying to get a lot of attention his way, allowing the quarterback to roll, but he just didn't have the touch. Got it a little high, and Refurio will take over 0-0. Zero zero. Still the score here in this uh, regional final game of Class 2A. Refrio dodges a bullet after that huge, I'd say 50, 60 yard reverse by Lee. Defense holds firm. Receiver split out wide to the left side. Two men in the backfield. It's gonna go to Bisbee. This time he's gonna take a shot, bounce off that man, work his way forward. He tries to drive, but uh, good defense, number 51. The initial hit, the, actually not the initial hitter, but he's the one who slowed down his progress. That was Clayton Webernick. The initial hit came from number 75, Fabian Benavides there off that defensive tackle position for the Ganado Indians there, Stephen. Bisbee did a good job just fighting off that tackle, though. You're, you're not, he's not the type of back that's going to go down if you hit him. You have to wrap up. You have to pull him down. I mean, he's going to bounce off a lot of people that are just trying to try to put a shoulder into him. If you don't wrap up, you're not going to bring down Bill Bisbee. Bill Bisbee, once again, runs through his own man, 
gets over the 30 yard line. You know, Stephen, there is a great matchup in the trenches. We pointed out earlier there we see Sullivan getting up. Sullivan, Cone, Elizarde, along with Adrian Gonzalez there and Will McKinney. Some great blockers up front for the uh, Rafael Bobcat backs to try to run on the Indians with. But really, this game is for a 2A regional final, there is some size down on that field. There, no, there's a lot, of size, of the a lot of size, a lot of talent. These are two great squads. Brown keeps it himself, fakes to Bisbee, gets enough for the first down. At that point, he'll be moved back, but, you know, it's time to move the chain. She gets about two extra yards, so this drive definitely continues. A lot of tacklers. I'm going to say a lot of tacklers over there for the Indians, but it will be a first down. Thing about Rafiro and their style of play is they like to run the ball. They like to play a lot of power football. They can throw the ball, and they'll spring it on you when you least expect it. But uh, they are a ball control team who like to control the clock, especially. Two receivers split to each side. Bisbee gets to the 40. Gains about four yards. Coming off the bottom there, number 62. That's Tommy Tristan, again, linebacker. Not a big man, 155 pounds, but a hitter. Very ferocious. Going to be second down after that gain of four. You know, Steve, one thing to point out, with Rafael staying on the ground, that clock just marches on down toward halftime here, and no score on the board for neither team there. Clashawn Brown and Billy Bailey split to the right side. I believe Cedric Wills is in the ball game. Brown rolls, becomes pressure from the opposite side. He tries to break free. He does get by one. He picks up a blocker, and he's going to try and turn it up the field. He does get some good yardage and a great play. I think Brown ran about 60 yards. No, I'm taking take that back. Probably about 30 yards, but he does get enough for another Bobcat first down. And the super thing about that was the way his blockers came back to help were very aware and did not do anything silly like blocking in the back. They waited till their, uh, their intended uh, their intended targets were faced up. They didn't do anything illegal or cheap, and it will be another first down for Afurio. Well, you pointed out uh, picking up blocks there, number 70. Sullivan was one of the key men that picked up a nice little block on the little comeback block there as Brown was scrambling around back there. Again, two receivers to the right side. First down in Ganado territory. Bisbee. No, just, gets, just now gets over into Ganado territory, over the 50 down to the 48-yard line. So it'll be a gain of about three, possibly four. Second down. Coming into the ball game, number 24, Lucas Garcia. He brings in the play from Coach Harris. He and... Number 19, Clashawn Brown was split to the right side. Bisbee, left side. Fights his way forward over the 45 to the 44. It's going to be third down, and they need two, possibly three. So another big third down play. That's the one thing Ganado has been doing to Rafira. They're making him use all their downs. third down. Billy Bailey brings in the play this time. He and Norman Moya come back in the ball game for Clashawn Brown and Lucas Garcia. Receivers are going to split out to the left side. McKinney the center. Sets up with the rest of the offensive line. Brown fakes. He follows his great block. Over to Norman Moya. He turns it up the field, 30 25, taken down to the 23 yard line. And I tell you one thing, there was a huge block from the other receiver. Let's see, you had Norman Moya, and who else was out there with him? Number 81. 81, Billy, Billy Bailey. Bailey. He Great made block. a huge block uh, opening up for Norman Moya. Billy Bailey, at number 81, outstanding, outstanding block. That was, that was just, that was fun to watch. 
Plain yeah, and simple. That was, that was, that was just the key fun to, to watch. Moya picking up all that yardage there, Stephen. The way Billy Bailey delivered his block, a great, what, uh, more of a seal block than, it, than anything here, right? Just created a lane down the left side. It'll be first down at the 24 yard line of Granada. Refurio again getting downfield. I'm sure this time they want points. Bisbee worked his way to about the 20, gain of three, maybe four. On top, number 62, Tristan. You know, you mentioned number 62, Tristan, but also on the referral side, number 62, Tony Lizada, the great block there on Anthony Galindo there. 224 and counting, as uh, we mentioned, staying on the ground keeps that clock going. It's been a fast game here tonight, Stephen. Always is. Out of ball control. I like to play this game in the middle of the field. Ooh, upended. Upended. Shooting the gap. Cedric Wills was upended by number 33, Doug Holt. You've seen him at the tailback, and now you see him shoot his way in from the linebacker. And uh, I tell you one thing, he just sent Wills right off his feet. There's going to be a timeout on the field taken by Refurio, the third timeout by Refurio in this half, the last one. Ball will be spotted at the 25 yard line. They actually lose a little bit of yardage. And it should be third down and 10 upcoming. They got a lot to talk about here. You know, they've taken the timeouts when some key situations have been on the, as, as far as the field situation goes, Steve. But they took the timeouts there when the, uh, had a chance to make a first down. At one particular time, came back and executed that yardage needed for first down. Here it is, third, what, about 11 yards needed. It's a key down because you're almost at the two-minute mark of the half. You've been inside uh, the red zone, I believe, twice, as you pointed out, That's without right. any points on the scoreboard. So you got to get something on the board here before halftime. Third down and 10. Michael Brown. He rolls left side. Here comes the pursuit from the opposite side. Brown is going to try and throw. He does get it away, and it's incomplete. Intended receiver was number 24, Lucas Garcia. But I tell you one thing, coming from the opposite side, number 25, Michael Tristan showed some super speed coming from the complete total opposite side of the field to uh, track down Michael Brown. Michael could never really get squared up to make a good throw there, and it will be fourth down. You know, several times that backside pursuit has been the key of Refrio not being able to pick up that key play and execute a first down when needed. What's difficult especially is, again, he – well, Cancino's going to kick this field goal attempt. Let's see if he's got it in there from 41 yards. Oh, it's kind of a pop-up and going to go wide to the left side. So another opportunity squandered by the Bobcats. 0-0 zero, zero the score. We have just over a minute to go here in the first half. One thing I was mentioning a minute ago, though, on the third down attempt, Brown, he rolls left, and considering he's a right-handed quarterback, he, he has to slow down a bit, square his shoulders in order to turn and make an accurate throw. And with the pressure he was receiving from behind, he was unable to do that. And in turn, there was an incomplete pass and setting up the field goal attempt, which was in what was was excuse me. Was, I want to say ink. I want to say incomplete, but there is no such thing as an incomplete field goal attempt, you know, which was no good. Plain and simple. Well, there we see Brian Hurd taking the time out there, Stephen. There is a timeout. Yeah, that's right. They want to talk about this and be sure that, you know, since they have a little bit over a minute to go here, they want to see if, uh, you know, is there any way possible we can do something? Or do we just kind of try and kill this clock? Do we want to work it down the field and see if we can get scoring opportunities? The one thing about it is, you know, if they start throwing the ball and are un unsuccessful, you know, unsuccessful, excuse me, that, you know, it could again lead to another opportunity for a Fury if they were to intercept something. So it's a decision they have to make. Do they just want to do some ball control? right now and uh, just kill this clock considering how deep they are in in their own territory or hey take take the opportunities as you can get them because right now they're very few and far between for anybody to actually put some points on the board the quarterback Brian Hurt comes back up to the line pitches right side pitches to number 20 on the outside he will be up in a great play Reggie Hollins along with Cedric Wills over there. I see also stringing their way down the line, James Hayward, along with, I believe, was that number 
76. Kermit Tyler, did That's I read right. that correctly? Kermit Tyler playing that defensive tackle position on that particular play there, Steven. It will be second down. The clock continues to wind. Steven, one thing to kind of think about it as the clock winds down here in the half is the Indians pretty well going to be contentious to stay on the ground and run this clock out there. That's what we're just talking about. Yeah, let's see. Let's see what the plan is here. Two receivers split to the right side. No. Nope. Wait a minute. Fake, fake double reverse. They're going to get some good yardage here, get about to the 40 and another first down. Number five, Reggie Hollins, along with Michael Mascoto, takes him down, but that could have been a lot bigger. That could have been a lot bigger of a play. Again, I was looking for the double reverse, and they just went with a single, fake the double, and uh, do, they do get a first down, though. Gain of about 10, 15 yards. I'd say about, I'd say about 15 yards on that play. Well, the uh, defense secondary, we've got timeout Ganado Indians here. Yeah, they stayed in bounds. Uh, the uh, secondary did a great job of staying at home on that particular play, Stephen, and reading the uh, what you pointed out, a fake double reverse. Was that the uh, look like? I believe like? so. That's what it looked like to me. Okay. But uh, either way, the uh, defense secondary stays at home. Michael Moscoto comes up, also number 88, and has the uh, contributing factor on that play to bring down the ball carrier number 20 there for uh, – the Indians being Sterling Watson. Sterling Watson's uh, their other main ball carrier. He comes into this ball game having rushed for a little bit over 500 yards for the season. So it's mainly been Watson and Duck Hole as far as the running attack goes of the Ganado Indians for the year, Stephen. Well, let's see if they want to. Well, obviously they they have something up their sleeve. They want to try something. They, they want points because they're they're pulling out a couple gadget plays here. So I don't think they're content with trying to run this out. Let's see what they have up their sleeve. Again, two receivers split to the left side. First down from the 41-yard line. Throws out into the flats. Slips and falls right at the 40, and there's going to be a penalty flag. You saw it happen, and I don't think it was tremendously intentional. He might have slipped and fell. I don't know, but you saw it there. They're going to throw uh, a late hit call. So they'll tack on 15. Personal foul. Tacking on 15, so... An opportunity there for them to do a number of things. Continue the clock to wind. Keep them stuck back in their own side of the field, but not anymore. Got to play with a little bit of control there, folks. The ball will be spotted at the 44-yard line of Refurio now. You know, there's been some key penalties on the Refurio Bobcats here tonight, Stephen, that have kept the Indian drive going several times or has in other uh, times stopped the Rafael Bobcat drive. It's going to Greg Lee, the wide receiver. He wants to, he was looking to throw. Now he's going to try and run. He tries to get to the 50. He turns the corner 40, cuts back inside, gets all the way to the 30, actually going to step out of bounds at the 32. And another penalty flag. Did we get a face mask pulling him out of bounds? Oh, Looked like my he was already goodness. out of bounds, Steven, when that occurred, but... Uh, Hard to tell from up here, but we did see the uh, penalty flag being thrown. We'll see what the uh, option's going to be down there. The referee's discussing it right now. Let's see if it was a 5 or a 15. Let's see what the, the play call is. Was it a flagrant or not? Well, Steven, we're they say inside. a dead ball foul, another personal foul. So it's another 15 yards. Boy, it's going to put him in good field position. But is that going to put the ball inside the 20 there, Steven? Sure is. It's going to put it right about the 17-yard line. So they tack on another 15 at the end of the run. Greg Lee, number 21, doing a lot of dance. And initially that play was designed for him to, to throw the ball. But uh, when it was not there, he did an outstanding job just running to get away. And once he got pulled out of bounds, mm, the quarterback, Brian Hurt, under a minute to go here. He drops back, rolls. He looks. Down the side. He's got a man. He's got a man. Is it good? Is it? He says it is a touchdown. A touchdown. The intended. Let's see. Was that Lee? Greg Lee in the back of the end zone. He had a man with him, but somehow or another pulls that one in and keeps one foot in bounds. And that's all it takes. Six to zero the score. They are the first ones to put points on the board here in this ball game. Great concentration by Lee.
They're going to bring on the kicker for the extra point. You see now we have a bit of an obstructed view. <laughs> the kick is going to go up, and I believe it is no good. Maybe that might come back to haunt them later on in this ballgame. Six to zero the score. The Ganado Indians lead the Refurio Bobcats with six seconds remaining in the first half. So we'll get a kickoff return. Let's see what happens. What, two key penalties there against the Refurio Huge. Bobcats? Huge penalties. 30 yards worth of penalties in that drive right there. No, they've had, what, a, five penalties in the first half for – at a key time, the penalty has gone against the Refrio Bobcats, Stephen. That uh, could, couldn't come more at, at a worse time, those two critical 15-yarders there. No, it could not. Bad timing. Bad timing. They will kick it away, they being the Indians, from the 40-yard line. Right now, if you can get a – Good run back, great, but if you get a run back here, it's, you know, and you don't score, you're going to kill your six seconds off the clock. Let's see what the plan is there. I bet you he might just squib this ball. That seems to be the strategy a lot of the coaches these days when they want to get something started early and work some off those last couple seconds. It's actually going to be a little pop-up kick. Going to be fielded right about the 32-yard line. And who falls on that ball? It was number 20, Doc Casino, the uh, up man that took that one, Stephen. It will be Refurio's ball. There was a little bit of confusion there. They were having trouble handling that one. So it will be. Yes, they don't use up the entire clock, so they will go ahead and get one more playoff here. And there's another timeout taken. If you, you know, use them or lose them, I suppose. Another timeout taken by the Ganado Indians. They're going to be talking over there, the coaches, I'm sure. Uh, head coach Monty Althaus is going to say, hey, nothing gets deep. Nothing gets behind you. Keep everything in front of you. I'm sure they're playing one serious prevent right now. They're going to send the defensive linemen to the line. They're going to send anybody else? Not really, not too much else. They're going to be sure nothing gets back behind them. With two seconds remaining in the first half, Michael Brown, the quarterback for Afiro, comes up to the ball. He's going to take the knee. He's going to take the knee to end it instead of potentially having any, uh, if he were to go down the field, any interceptions that could lead to a run back for any more scores for Ganado. So good play by Coach Harris. Trail by six, though. The Refugio Bobcats do to the Ganado Indians here in the Region 4 Class 2A Regional Finals. The friends of the Refugio Bobcats back the Bobcats in the 1996 race for the Class 2A State Championship. These, of course, are our sponsors who brought us the second quarter's worth of action. Moya's Cafe in business since 1938. Four generations of family service. Always support the Refurio Bobcats. Go Bobcats all the way to state. Refurio Motor Company. We support the Refurio Bobcats. All of us at the Refurio Motor Company are your friends before and after the deal. We are located at 706 South Alamo in Refurio. And last but not least, the Refurio Pharmacy. Refurio Pharmacy and Brit Flowers and Gifts help bring you this portion of the Refurio Bobcats versus the Nado Indians game. We support the Bobcats all the way. Sackham Zack number 47. <laughs> Getting ready to come back and start the third quarter. Here come the Bobcats. Again, Albert, the Bobcats only trail by six. Again, it's been a very defensive first half on both sides of the ball. Also, uh, 
there were some other things that contributed penalties turnovers on both sides on both sides the penalties especially hit Refurio late in that first half but there were turnovers on both sides of the ball for both for both uh, teams you know if they were to each play a little bit cleaner ball and I mean that not not as in dirty but just to uh, execute in a much uh, cleaner fashion we might see a lot more points in the second half than we saw in the first well the offensive uh team of the uh, Indians there as we see the uh, captains out in the middle of the field to uh, discuss the situation over as we're going to start this second half here momentarily. The offensive side of the ball as far as the referral Bobcats went, they pretty much were content to ground it out with Bisbee and uh, Hollins and we saw Cedric Wills come in late in the uh, first half use their strength up front to try to create some running lanes and that was the key there several times when the referee was able to get deep into uh, Indian territory, but the uh, two missed field goals by Casino went straight. Uh, the difference in the ball game right now, the Ganado Indians up on top, of score six to nothing. I'll tell you one thing, if, if you were to ask Coach Harrison, I'd say instead of the two missed field goals being the difference, I think he'd say those two personal fouls in the last drive are the difference in this ball game right now. But uh, hey, it's a second half. Only trailing by six. Refer was definitely in this ball game, you know, definitely. Cancino to kick this ball away from the 40 yard line. Good kick. Goes deep. There comes a pursuit. It is going to be Lee. Tries to make a move. Cuts back to the inside. The pursuit will finally catch up with him about the 24 yard line. Maintain composure, guys. Need to maintain your composure down there. Don't get caught up in. In a lot of things. Again, that was part of the problem of the first half being there. So, must play in control. The Indians will take over at the 24 yard line, first down and 10. And I'm sure they are just as interested. We talked about how Refurio needs to put points on the board. I'm sure that they would love to stretch out this lead to open this uh, second half. Ryan Hurt, the quarterback, hands off. Going to go to Holt. Holt gets over the 25, all the way to the 27, so it'll be a gain of three. Riding his back, number 88, Michael Muscoto, along with number 76, Kermit Tyler. Well, Steven, we're trying to see if there was any adjustments made on the defensive side of the ball as far as the referral Bobcats go here to start the second half. They're pretty uh, you much know, I, still I, yeah. going with the same alignment. Well, the thing the situation but was, you know, they really did a good job. They held them primarily the whole first half except for that last series, and that was aided by penalty. So they may not need to make too many adjustments. Goes to the first man. Again, he goes to about a three other three-yard gain. Excuse me there. That was number 72 on the stop, Sean Sullivan. Sterling Watson, the ball carrier there for the Indians. They, uh, he's trying to contribute uh, some of that running uh, yardage also as far as the offensive attack goes to the Indians with uh, Doug Holt and him being the main two ball carriers. It is third down and four. Can the Bobcats hold here on third? They want to throw across the middle, broken up. Broken up, Moscoto coming back into the play, reading the eyes of the quarterback. The intended receiver was number 21, Greg Lee. But uh, outstanding play. There was good coverage from the outside, but Moscoto coming across from the linebacker really I think got a piece of the ball. If not, he probably scared Greg Lee to death. Well, I think he launched there at the last second there to break that one up, and that was a great read, as you pointed out, looking back probably at the quarterback's eyes. Uh, Michael Moscoro, the senior, playing great defense again, Stephen. It will be fourth down. So this is, I'm sure, exactly what the Bobcats wanted. They knew that they were going to have to kick the ball away, but a big defensive surge here to open up the second half. Kick is up. Going back deep, Norman Moya. Takes it at the 33-yard line. Works nice. Dance and move. Oh, gets clipped. Not clipped in the <laughs> in the bad sense of the word, but uh, just clips his foot right there at the 44-yard line by number 19, Brian Hurt. Moya, I mean, there's an opportunity there. He did some fancy dancing to get what he got, and if he has, if he gets around Hurt to the outside, there's some uh, some serious uh, real estate. I'll they'd, say. They'd set up the wall to that far side, Stephen. There were some blockers there for him to. Uh, Pick up some nice yardage on that punt return. He could have gotten by hurt, as you pointed out. At the 44-yard line, Bisbee up the middle. Does it again, gets about four. 
He's normally pretty consistent for about that four yards. You need that four, he'll get you four. 5'10", 225-pound junior. He's had all these playoff games, Stephen. He's rushed for over 100 yards coming into the regional finals game. So he's really contributed for the referral Bobcats offense running attack. On second down and six. This time it's going to go to the second man. I think that's Hollins trying to get uh, something going. Gets over the 50 to the 48. It will be third down. Number 62, Tommy Tristan was the man on the stop for Ganado. And let's see what they'll need. They'll need about two or a long, or actually three or a long two, we'll call it. Coming into the ballgame, number 30, Cedric Wills. He normally comes in for Hollins, leaving he and Bisbee in the backfield. What is Coach Harris's call? He's going to send Norman Moya out wide to the right side. Bailey, wide left. Hands off to Bisbee. Boy, we've seen that a number of times, and Bisbee does it again. Great blocking up front by number 75, Adrian Gonzalez, and number 70, Sullivan. They, they were both lined up to the uh, strong side of the uh, offensive formation there, the two tackles. Sullivan that time was playing guard. Adrian Gonzalez, number 75, playing the tackle position. Great blocking, guys. On first down. Ball at the 42. Brown, the broken play. Brown's going to try and make something out of nothing here and not going to happen. He's actually going to lose a yard possibly. And uh, definitely a broken play. You saw as he turned that somebody was not there. So it will be second down and 10. He may get back to the line of scrimmage or he might lose about a half yard. You know, Stephen, if he would have come wide on that one, he might have been able to pick up some nice little yardage instead of you know, just cutting up where he did. You know, one thing to point out as we get a shot of the uh, referral band there, we've got a crowd here tonight, probably about 10,000. Both sides of the stands packed jam tonight, Stephen. Unbelievable. Bisbee gets over the 40, down to the 39. And again, Bisbee does his job getting about three, possibly four. You know, Stephen referral shuts down the Indian attack here to start the third quarter, and now they're just grounded it out on the ground. The great uh, execution there as far as the line goes blocking-wise. Fabian Benavides was a man on the stop, but again, Due to the first down play being, um, you could say, just uh, a misplay, they do have third down and long. I'm going to say third down and seven. So they want to go to the outside. They want to give Michael Brown an opportunity. The pursuit's been very good. He might be a little bit longer than, uh, I mean, they've, they've got to Bisbee. Bisbee gets his four or five yards, but I haven't seen him break anything longer than that. Brown is going to try and take it himself. Left side. Tries to turn up the field. He does a great job getting over the 35 and kind of rides the Indian player all the way down to about the 32, 33 yard line. It's good. What I mean by that is when he was going down, the Indian was underneath him, so he was not actually touching the ground and considered down. And he just kind of rode his back and probably got an extra yard out of that play. Well, we are going to have an official measurement here as the referral Bobcats do trail here halfway through the uh, third quarter by a score of six to nothing in favor of the Ganado Indians as the measurement comes up, Stephen. Did you see uh, number six? Just short. Well, okay, just short. But number 62 there with a key block for Michael Brown there at the end of that play. Tony and Lazalde, you're right. Got him that close, but again, it's one of those fourth down scenarios. And uh, we've had a few of them. Coach Harris called timeout before each of these fourth down calls last time. Uh, are they going to do it this time or are they happy? I think they're going to go ahead and get straight into it. I, you know, not a betting man, but uh, I'm looking for Bisbee. I'm looking for Bisbee. They're looking for Bisbee too, though, so, you know. We look, uh, try to pick up, yeah, they're come up with kind of a goal line defense there, the Ganado yeah, Indians the, do. Got the linebackers and everybody up tight. Bisbee, and he gets his first down. Gets all the way to the 30 and continues on. 29, 28, all the way down to the 27-yard line. And um, it was just pretty much that. I wouldn't have doubted if Michael Brown went up the line and goes, hey, guys, we're going to give it to number 33 over here, okay? He's going to come right here now. Y'all try and stop him because you haven't done it yet. That was great strength running there by Bill Bisbee to get that yardage needed for a first down and keep this drive alive is the, the main key right now, Stephen. 
You pointed out that missed extra point late in the uh, first uh, half there. That could come to the haunt them. That's right. We'll see what happens here as the Rafael Bobcats come to the line of scrimmage. Receiver split to each side. Brown, the quarterback, under center. Going to go to Bisbee. Kind of, uh, no, that's actually Hollins. Hollins is going to work his way forward over the 25 to the 24. Good yardage on first down. It gets, I would say, about three, four yards. Second down. I'll say second and seven. Again, a three on that last play by Hollins. This time again, Holland's right side. He's going to be hit from behind. He will fall forward for an extra yard, maybe two. Number 78 hit him in his back. Is that 78 or 79? Excuse me, that's number 79, 79, Anthony Galindo. You know, Galindo has been in on quite a few stops here tonight from that defensive tackle position. The uh, type of defense that the Indians run allows a lot of the uh, tackles to be made by either the two linebackers or those two defensive tackles. Because Rafael, as you pointed out, is pretty well content to run Bisbee up the uh, interior line. Brown throws out into the flat, which again, Norman Moya turns it up. Good open field tackle, but Moya does a good job getting yardage all the way down to the 15-yard line. We have a coach out on the field who's not, I think he's either yelling at the officials. I think he's either yelling at an official or if he's yelling at his own players. That's kind of dangerous. You come out on the field right there, you're, you're, you're begging for a penalty on the sideline there. And they say it is enough for the first down. I don't know what he's uh, would be complaining about. Maybe they're saying that there's a block in the back or something. But, uh, you know, be that as it may, it is a first down. There was no penalty flag. And Referio, again, is knocking on the door at the 16-yard line. Again, this is the third or fourth time they've been in the red zone. Let's see if they can get the points on this time. They sure do need them. Two receivers to the left. Bisbee. There he's turning it on. 10, 5. Again. That's the best run of the night for Bill Bisbee right there. He's had some clutch uh, first down conversions, but that was his biggest single run of the night. It puts him down, like you put it out, Steven, at the four yard line. And that was just great blocking on the Refrio Bobcats offensive line. All five of those guys fired out along with the tight end. Joseph Bland, great blocking on the interior line of the uh, Refrio Bucket's offensive line. It'll be first down, goal to goal from the five. Bisbee pulls his way forward all the way to the two. And he is just pushing people back. You see number 42 right there, uh, the man who does take him down, Jared Lambert, but Lambert was pushed back a yard or two on that play. You saw James Hayward in the backfield there. Also, Stephen, number nine. They're going with their size as far as their running attack goes now. Going with the muscle. Second down, goal to goal from the two. Brown. Fumble. Fumble. The ball's on the ground. Where is it? Where is it? Ganado. Oh, they do. Unbelievable. Ganado falls on the ball. Refurio misses another opportunity at putting points on the board. Number 65 there, Chad Green, Stephen. Uh, I just, I don't know, Steve, what uh, the uh, Michael Brown just pulled out uh, before he had the ball in his hands. Is that uh, what it looked like from I, up here? I don't know. I just couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you. Well, one thing right now is Ganado has their back up against the wall. They're on their one foot line, maybe the one, you know, just barely. And they got a T formation in their backfield. They're going to work their way up the middle and get a little bit of breathing room. Bulls his way forward to the four-yard line. Want to get a little space here. Mascoto was the man on the stop. Number 33 was the running back, Doug Holt. And it will be second down and I will say six. And they needed to get some space because they were sitting in a position where uh, a potential safety. And again, anything, if there's a hold, if there's any penalty in the end zone, I believe that's also a safety. Holt, left side. He's not going to get anything. Not going to get anything. The first man to him, number 61, was the first man to lay his shoulder on him. Winston O'Connell, senior at 200 pounds. 
And uh, again, then the rest of the gang tackling started along with, you know, James Hayward, uh, Moscoto, and, and others. Linscrum, the, the whole defensive Linscrum, exactly. right side of the line was there, Steven. First was man it? to give him a shot, though, was 61, O'Connell. Third down. Everybody talking back in the backfield like, where are you going? I'm going to go over here. How about you? Where are They're you going? They're in the uh, T formation again, it looks like, Steve. I believe so. Kind of tighter. It's a little tighter formation this time. He wants to throw. He goes down the field. He finds his man at the 25, 30, 35, 37-yard line. Gets out of a tremendous hole. Number 10, Heath Burris was the man who made the reception, found a hole in the middle of the field, and the quarterback puts it right in his hands, Brian Hurt. Michael Brown, number one, was the man who brought him down, but uh, he was, a, you could tell, after he made the tackle, he was seriously dejected about giving up that much yardage. That's a great pickup on Brian Hurt's part. The quarterback saw that man over the middle, delivered it right on the money, as you pointed out. He just turns it up to a big first down for the Indians to keep this drive going, Stephen. That, that really pulled him out of the hole, as you put, pointed out. on first and 10 from the 37 yard line of the Indians. Gonna go to the second man and there he is stopped. He has run up from behind. Number 61 again, Winston O'Connell. Doing an outstanding job. Number 20, Sterling Watson, the sophomore at 166 pounds, trying to make something happen. But uh, O'Connell done an outstanding job. Just really just running up his back. Was he the one who, who was the one who shot? It was like that one was, of the linebackers. Was that O'Connell? That was O'Connell from that far side, Steve, playing that defensive tackle position. He's turned it up a notch here. He had that play down at the goal line a few plays ago. Now this one here, yeah, defensive tackle position, Winston O'Connell, number 61, the senior playing great defense right now. Pitch. Sterling Watson once again. Oh, he takes a shot. He takes a shot coming up. Number 61, O'Connell, first man to get him in the backfield. But as he goes through, you see Hayward along with Reggie Hollins coming up to seal that play at the 35-yard line. You know, we mentioned O'Connell. He come from the far side. Great pursuit there to kind of trip him up. Took him off balance a little bit. Then Hayward delivers the shot, as you pointed out. It will be third down and long. Third and 12, to be precise. T formation. There was a jump. I think they're going to get a free play here. Quarterback rolls. He's going to be boom. Taking down Mascoto. Seals that deal, but I think we're going to have a five yard penalty against Refurio, unless, of course, they were drawn off. But what a great open field tackle by number 88, Michael Mascoto. We have a player down for Refurio. Let's, let's see what the penalty is. Let's see if we can get something official here. Was he drawn off? Apparently they do want to talk about this. Apparently it's not, a, it's not that cut and dry. Number 47 gets up, walks off Zach Linscombe, and apparently he's going to be okay. They, I believe, marked off the five against Refurio. It was offsides, so the big play by Moscoto is negated. It will be third down and seven. That will be the end of the third quarter. The score once again, the Ganado Indians six and the Refurio Bobcat zero. Get zero, excuse me. This is again <laughs> the Region 4 Class 2A Regional Finals. Sponsors who brought us the third quarter, of course. Texaco Gasco Market. Leaving for the game or just need a fill-up? Stop at the Texaco Gas and Go Market at 719 Victoria Highway. Go Bobcats. TPR Arena, located two miles west of Refurio on Highway 202, proudly supports the Refurio Bobcats as they strive for the 2A state championships. For information, call 526-2737. Go Bobcats from Tony and Roxy Padilla. Whataburger. Whataburger and Refurio proudly supports the Refurio Bobcats as they make tracks for the 2A state championship. And Advantage Publishing Company. We urge you to follow the winning ways of Refurio's mighty Bobcats each week in the Advantage Press as sports writer Carl Barnhart puts the game highlights into sharp focus. The Advantage Press and Bobcat supporters say all the way to state cats.
Time for the fourth quarter. Bobcats got their backs against the wall. Again, this is, this is, I don't see who that is waving the flag with there. But this is do or die. This is single elimination. This is the playoffs. That was Dan Sullivan back there waving that flag number 70. Trying to senior. stir up the crowd. Going to the first man, Holt, and he is going to be taken down. Great one-on-one -on -one tackle, Winston O'Connell. Tried a little delay draw there to Holt, and in, you know, plain and simple, nothing happened. O'Connell yeah, made a great read. O'Connell really turned it up a notch here on that defensive side of the ball as far as the series went, Stephen. He had uh, three tackles that were at key times of bringing down the ball carrier as far as uh, defense goes. That was outstanding. That was huge on, on third down. It is fourth. They will punt it away. Back deep to receive is Norman Moya. That one's a little bit lower. It's going to go working its way out of bounds at the 30. No, actually the 20. Nice mark. 24-yard line. So he got a very favorable bounce to the uh, Ganado Indian punter there. So it will be at the 24-yard line, and this is Refurio's opportunity here. Michael Brown follows his big offensive line to the line of scrimmage. Again, this is the 24-yard line. Receiver split to each side. Hollins, left side. Gets about three, maybe four. Then takes a good shot. I tell you one thing, I will give credit to the Ganado Indians and in the fact that they are hitters. They definitely are hitters. Number 51 was the man on that stop, Clayton uh, Webernick, and he did an outstanding job. 245 pound senior. LaShawn Brown, along with Bailey, split to the left. Second down and six. Oh, slips and falls, but Bisbee will go forward, getting very close to the first down. I think he's actually going to be short by about a yard. Bounced his way up to the uh, yard marker. His lead blocker, I believe, was Hollins, who kind of spun out as he tried to work his way forward, but Bisbee still turned it up. He is shorter by about a half yard. We've seen this all day. Let's see if Bisbee does it once again. That's what they call on, and he is going to, I think he's going to get enough this time. That was one of the best uh, uh, efforts by the Indian defense, number 25, making the tackle. Uh, Michael Tristan, but uh, definitely still enough for the first down the way I see it. Bisbee has been outstanding on, on third down conversions and fourth down conversions this ball game. The official call is first down, Stephen, as you pointed out. So the Freo Bobcats pick up another key first down here in the early of the fourth quarter as they trail by the score six to nothing. They definitely need to get some on the board here before this game is over with. On first at the 34 yard line. Again, two receivers to the left side. Brown keeps it, fakes to Brisby. With the pursuit, oh, Brown does a good job just to elude uh, a substantial loss. He will go forward for about a yard. That was a nice carry out fake by Bill Bisby there. Oh, he sure did. He, was, he went into the line there, Steven. He got me, he got the camera guy, he got everybody on that one. There's going to be a timeout taken on the field here. It's going to be second down and nine. Coach Harris wants to be sure that, hey, everybody, you know, concentrate on what you're doing. And I, I believe that that was good, good pursuit by the defense, but possibly could have been a little bit of a broken play. And if uh, you lose concentration in a key juncture like this at 8.56 to go in this ballgame, I mean, this can be your last game of the season. Ball is spotted at the... 36, close to the 37 yard. It's right in, it's right in the middle there, and uh, it'll be about second and eight. Receivers to each side. Lucas Garcia and also Clashawn Brown in the patterns. Hollins left side follows his blockers. Actually runs over one of his blockers. Tries to get to the 40. He'll get to about the 39. So it's going to give them another relatively long third down effort. It's going to be third down and about five. Holes are really not developing over there. Not, not right now. Not on Steven. the sweeps. Not on the sweeps. The pursuit has has been there all night long as far as the uh, Indians' defensive line goes. The linebackers played great read, great technique, reacting to the ball. That's 
with number 62, Tommy Tristan, along with number 33, Doug Holt, the two linebackers for the Indian defense. On third down and five, huge third down play. Want to throw. Same play as earlier. Tries to turn it up. He does get it. There is a penalty flag this time. I see the penalty flag. He does get enough for the first down, but I think that there was a block in the back. Steven Yo, I was talking about the defense. We failed to pick it up. The quarterback, Jason Garza, number what, 12 had come in there at the time. The receiver was Michael Brown, number one. That oh, that, I, you know, that slipped right by me, too, as a matter of fact. It is a hold. They're going to call a hold on the outside, so it will be a penalty. And uh, Coach Harris, while well, he has his players on that side of the field, is going to talk to them as they move off this penalty because I'm definitely, most definitely going to take the penalty and move them back 10 yards from the spot of the infraction, making it third down and about 12. So we see Jason Garza come back into the ball game. We anticipate he will will remain at quarterback. Michael Brown will be playing that wide out position. Well, possibly. Again, they, they like to mix it up a little bit. They are going to spot it uh, 10 yards deep. Jason Garza, as you see, senior, started the year as a starting quarterback. But uh, changing game plan, went one of a running attack throughout the latter part of the season. Garza wants to throw. Fakes one way. Oh, he is pressured. He is pressured. He did not have the time. He faked it to the outside flat, the uh, play they've been running all game long. Wanted to go up the field, but if there's no time, there's no time. Anthony Galindo, the man on the spot there, number 79. The junior at 260 pounds playing the defensive tackle position. He was the key to bring down Garza that particular time there, Steven. Huge play. Huge play by the Indians right there. Two men back deep to receive. Number 14, Barry Dunlap, along with number 21, Greg Lee. And it's going to turn into a situation where if they punt this ball away, they need to get it back quickly. Nice snap. It's going to go deep and take a big bounce. Lee is the closest man to it, but he is just going to walk away. It's going to bounce all the way down to the 26-yard line, spotted by number 19, Clashawn Brown. It'll be first down for the Indians. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Defense has got to be firm here, and they need to be opportunistic. They need to, if they have if they have opportunity, make tackles. But if you can get a hand in there and get that ball back, you know, that would be clutch. Uh, you don't want to sacrifice good tackling technique for just going for the ball because if you miss that ball, you're, you have a good chance of missing everything. But uh, if you can get a little of both, put a helmet into that ball, it would be perfect right now. To the first man, Holt. Gets over the 30-yard line, gains about three. James Hayward coming off the bottom of the stack. It will be second down in seven. He does get it over the 30 to about the 31. So they may give him about a full four yards on that play. Yes, Steve, when we look down on the field from up here, that field is in a little wet condition tonight. Yeah, that's uh, a little chunky. You see people pulling up a little yeah. turf. You've seen some people spin out here and there. And uh, both teams got to play in it. Boom, once again. Once again, big stop. Number 76, hitting him hard, Kermit Tyler. Tyler, excuse me, Kermit Tyler, 220-pound junior. Just rocked. Holt as he came through the line. Number of good, talented juniors on this squad for a Furio. Quarterback wants to bounce right side. He's going to be taken down. Cedric Wills just jumps on his back. We'll have a penalty flag also. Possibly a hold, but if that's the case, they, of course, will decline that. And in Refurio's favor, due to the penalty flag, they will stop the clock. They will stop the clock. Cedric Wills is an outstanding job just getting back there so quickly the quarterback never had time to even make a decision if he could pitch the ball or not. It was holding against the Indian offense there, Steven. Sure, it has declined. They want fourth down. They want that ball back. And I tell you one thing, the defense has come up huge on this play here. Fourth down, and the Indians will punt it away. It's time for a great return. What do you think? So I think it would be ball. ideal. It would be an ideal situation. Should be what? Michael Brown, the deep man? I would believe so. 
Kind of a low snap, but he gets away. Oh, it's Norman Moya, the deep man. Excuse me. He's going to pick it up at the 34 and uh, 40. I think he's going to throw, get to the 50 yard line, but I think we got a penalty flag back deep, blocking the back on the return there. And it was the return we were hoping for, but uh, a little aggressive on the kick return unit. Tell you what, the wall was set up for Norman Moya. We thought we might see Michael Brown back there utilizing his experience and speed, but they went with a junior at 5'10, 160 pounds, who's been returning them tonight. He went to the wall, just that one little mental let down on the block Stephen, and, and that could be the difference right now in this I ball say, game. if you can if well these guys don't have names on the back but if you can read their names you know just do that just read them don't touch them oh my goodness so they will move it back from the uh, spot of the infraction there well they're talking about it here they want to be sure absolutely sure it is again an illegal block on the back first down for a Furio, but uh, not at the 50 that's huge negative yardage there on the real Bobcats on that return, Steve, because of They the say penalty. it took place at the 34, and at the 10-yard penalty, it'll be spotted at the 24-yard line. So we're talking a 25, 26-yard difference here with the penalty. And uh, penalties have been bad to Furio this evening. 6-0 to zero the score. They do trail, and this is their opportunity. They got the ball back. The defense held firm, and the offense must turn it up right now. Again, Garza in a quarterback. Hands off to Hollins, left side. Tries to get the corner. He'll get over the 30. Very close to a first down. Gets about nine. So, good first down play by Refurio. Some good blocking on that left end side of the offensive line as they fire up on the Indians there. Key first down. Uh, we got a measurement coming up. I believe so, so yeah. Okay. They're going to stop the clock to measure this one. That's a key first down run for uh, Hollins there. He really turned up the speed there, Stephen, also. Once he got the handoff, he was looking for that yardage around the end to uh, add up to his yardage of the night. He's going to be just short, so it will be second down less than a yard. And uh, again, I think they're comfortable with the fact that Bill Bisbee can get that yardage. May They may not go to Bisbee right here on second, and they may try something interesting knowing that on third down, if they were to uh, you know, try and pass the ball and it was an incompletion. But they could be comfortable that Bisbee can get that first down for him. He's been great on short yardage. They're going to go to Hollins, though, over the right side. He'll get the first down. Gets over the 40. Outstanding play. Outstanding play. Good yardage. I think they were looking for Bisbee. Anytime it's been short yardage, they've been going to Bisbee. And, heck, I was looking for him. Hollins does an outstanding job, though, getting over the 40-yard line. They're focusing him. Uh, they're featuring him on this drive so far. Well, you know, they're, they're featuring Hollins, as you just pointed out, Stephen. His speed, if he breaks one or two tackles, he's liable to take it into the end zone with the speed that he possesses. Big play threat. You're right. Bisbee, right? Left side, excuse me. Bulls his way forward. Continues bullying his way forward. Close to the 50-yard line. I'm telling you, they're just driving people back. You see number 60 getting himself off the ground. That guard there had a key block there off the uh, offensive line, Tim Combe, number 60, six foot, 195 pounds, senior, plays the uh, strong guard position for the Frail Bobcats offense. It'll be just short of a first down. They need another yard. Nine yard carry by Bisbee. Hollins. Oh, he's going to be upended short. Penetration deep. Number 33 shoots his way in. Again, that's Doug Holt. You've seen him on the offense. He makes the big play on the defense right there. Also coming off the bottom, number 35, Kyle Pear. And uh, did Hollins come up a little bit slow himself? Looked like it, Stephen, there. Maybe when uh, he rolled down, there we got a timeout of Frail Bobcats? Or what? Yes, it is. Yeah. There is going to be a timeout called right now. It was called on the sideline, so not by the players, but by the coaching. Maybe the wide receiver called it. Need to continue something here. Need to continue this drive. 3.36 remains. Ball is on the Refurio Bobcat 47-yard line. And uh, it's third down. They must continue this drive. The Indians trying to get their team fired up, get their fans into it. Chance of offense on one side, chance of defense on the other. Like I said, a great crowd. 
Bisbee. He is going to bowl his way forward and be, again, close to the first down. He needed to get just over the 50, which he did, but again, it's going to depend on the spot. Again, is it a right foot spot or a left foot spot? Are they going to stop the clock to measure this, or are they going to say he's short? They are going to stop the clock. Uh, officials timeout to measure this one. It will be fourth down if it is short. They are saying this one is again short. I'll tell you one thing. They have been short by under a foot all night long and forcing them to go into these, these fourth down conversions. Ball is spotted just short. Again, that's a, like I said earlier, left foot spot or right foot spot. And I think they definitely got the left foot spot on that one. Because I thought he had definitely uh, shot closer to the 49-yard line than the 50. Receiver split to each side. Linemen come up. The quarterback, Garza. Gives to Bisbee, and he is going to pull his way forward. He's going to turn on. No, I think he's going to get a good spot. They think that he's been driven back, but his forward progress, I believe, was definitely, yeah, there it is, first down. Definitely a first down. And uh, you're not going to stop Bill Bisbee, you know, when he has set his mind to something like that. You saw his legs just churning. He seemed like the whole wall had stopped, but his legs were continually going and going and going. One key pickup for Bill Bisbee there at a time when the game is really on Pretty the much line. on the line, exactly. On the line there. Great pickup. Bill Bisbee, number 33, 5'10", 225-pound uh, junior, that is. In the backfield, Hayward, along with Bisbee. Garza wants to throw. He's going deep. Down the right side, overthrown at the 15-yard line. I believe the intended receiver was number 17, if I'm not mistaken. Is that Rose Sanders? Uh, I believe I guess I am. I am correct. Again, Garza goes deep. They try to come up with uh, something big, but wasn't going to happen. Once again, Garza. We see Michael Brown split to the white side, Stephen. Hands off Hollins. You saw Brown trying to make a block down there. Uh, Hollins just continues fighting forward. They're going to say his knee went down. Uh, they're going to bring that one back. They're going to bring it back about yards. three or four yards. Uh, Hollins is working on the field. He's like, well, where are you spotting it, guys? But they say his knee went down early. It will be third down. They're definitely having to use all their all their downs in this ball game. Well, they're the going to need about six. The clock is playing a factor now, Stephen. They got to do something, strike quick or uh, trick play. Hollins right side gets the first down all the way down to the 36 yard line. But they, you're right, the clock is not their friend. On the stop, number 10. Man on the play, Heath Burris, sophomore for the Ganado Indians. You know, Stephen, Hollins has been one or little break away from getting yeah, that just big gainer that they need to put him in the end zone right now. Hollins. Follows his blockers. Gets over the 35 to the 34. Gains only about two. You saw him pushing his man forward like, come on, help me out here, guys. So we Good. saw number 75, Fabian Benavides, in the backfield. Yeah, he really worked his way in. You're right. Gets about two on the play. It'll be second down and eight. But I mean, it's got good penetration, and Hollins is lucky to not be taken down for a loss. Well, we'll see the crowd. They're on their oh, feet. They're on their, their feet for sure. Bobcats. Again, remember, let's see, hold on a second. Oh, Hollins, this time they're going to grab him by the jersey and pull him back. Number 75, Fabian Benavides, a man on the spot for the Indian defense. Man, I tell you one thing, he's, they both, everybody kind of seems pretty exhausted out there. We have a man down for Furo, and again, it is the running back, Reggie Hollins. They're going to check on him. I don't know, if, I mean, they were pulling on his arm, I mean, his, his sleeve and arm. Hopefully he doesn't have any problem with his shoulder. Or at this point, I'm also, he might be exhausted, you know. Well, he's had to carry the load here uh, 
He's done, he's done a lot of ball carries. Critical time to pick right. up the first down when they were keen on Bill Bisbee. They went to Reggie Hollins. What, 127 left 120 there? 120-something. Okay. We see Hollins uh, back on his feet there, Stephen. Yeah, he, he just, just looks exhausted, as you pointed out. I mean, he's working so hard right now. But they're going to help him off. The, they're going to assist him. You know, we looked there at Will McKinney coming back on the field. He definitely has a soiled jersey. As we pointed out how wet this field was tonight there. Yeah, there, that's not just sweat. There's all, there's, I mean, this, this field is a bit moist and it's been in trouble. And that might have also contributed to some of those problems with uh, McKinney and Brown earlier too. I believe it's third, is that correct? Third and quite long. Well, we're in four down territory, it does not matter. Ball is at the 34 yard line. Garza wants to throw. He's going to the zone. He is gonna be intercepted at the one yard line. Intercepted at the one yard line, I believe. Was that Hayward, the intended receiver? I'm not sure. I that thought was, he might. Uh, Michael Brown, the intended Michael receiver. Michael Brown, excuse there. me. I, I saw the single number, but it is an interception for the Ganado Indians, and they will have it first down and 10 at the one. Again, here's a situation that they have their backs up against the wall. Now the defense cannot put their heads down. They got to take control. They must take charge of this opportunity. There's a timeout on the field taken by the Indians. Again, same situation. You want to be sure that nobody has a penalty. You don't want any penalties in the end zone because I do believe, if I'm not mistaken, the rule is that will result in a safety. That's correct there, Steven. One thing to point out on that interception by Greg Lee is we see Coach uh, Will, uh, Will McKinney's dad there, Coach McKinney, gathering the defensive team on the field there, kind of telling them what could possibly be uh, going on on the next play as far as the offense goes of the Ganado Indians. But what I started pointing out was if Greg Lee just tips that ball a little bit, Michael Brown was open deep. Could have been a possible six there. That's something that, that we will look back on game film and talk about. But I believe Greg Lee tips the ball. Michael Brown could have easily had a touchdown there for the Frio Bobcats. Well, here's the scenario. I mean, who knows what could have been. But right now, the, here's the situation, what they have to do. You know. The opportune time comes, Stephen. Uh, they really need a fumble right now. The uh, referral Bobcats do. A fumble to occur on the Ganado Indians offense. They recover, and uh, that could be the difference in the ballgame. With that Again, missed remember, extra yeah, point. the mixed extra point is, is, can, be, can still be crucial. Key formation, hurt the quarterback. Runs it up himself. Trying to get a little running room, trying to get a little space. Steven, at this point, the thing about it, the clock keeps moving. That's right. That's the one thing not in Refurio's favor. Like we said earlier, the clock is not their friend. But Refurio does not have any timeouts left. I'm curious about that. I see Mascoto looking to the sidelines and. Formation once again, and the quarterback keeper again. They shoot the gap well, but he does fall forward to about the four, possibly five yard line. No backs, they're just content to stay in their stands back here. They've hardly moved at all on the two snaps, Stephen. No, they haven't. Third down. You can see the Indians are very fired up, and they're they're looking. I do believe the clock is on their side. You can see that they are very excited back there in the backfield, trying to contain themselves. And that's it. That's going to wind down. They do not have to run another play. The Ganado Indians. I'm not going to call it an upset. Again, they were, I mean, they were undefeated coming into this ball game. Ranked one, well, they were ranked five while Refuri was ranked six. But I tell you one thing. Fury played an outstanding game except for crucial uh, problems, crucial mistakes, uh, turnovers, and penalties at the most inopportune moments. But other than that, you saw that they ran up and down the field on these teams. But what matters, though, is the scoreboard. 6-0, to zero, the final, the Ganado Indians defeat the Refurio Bobcats. Again, real quick, our fourth quarter sponsors. 
TCI Cable Vision. We want to thank TCI Cable for making the rebroadcast time available. Sincere thanks to y'all. Midcoast Lease Service. Again, backs the Bobcats all the way to state. For experienced oil field service personnel, call Midcoast at 526-4636 in Refurio. I tell you one thing, these sponsors have been important to us. We thank them dearly for making this possible. To the seniors especially, what an incredible career you've had. Albert, you agree? I mean, there's some special people. They've, they've had a special run, and it came up a little bit short, but uh, it's character building for them. They'll leave a lot of outstanding memories with us, Stephen. Sure will. It, it's, been it's been exciting for us. I'm glad that we came on and got the opportunity to do this. It's been a whole lot of fun. I'm Stephen King. For Albert Flores, thanking you once again. Again, it's been special. Good night. Introducing the perfect family pleaser for the holiday season. It's the 25 tender holiday feast only at Golden Fried Chicken. 25 original, crispy, juicy golden tenders. Family sized mashed potatoes, family sized coleslaw, five hot buttermilk biscuits, and family sized country gravy, all for just $16.99. Ask for the 25 tender holiday feast at Golden Fried Chicken. Bobcat Corner. I'm your host, Albert Flores, along with athletic director and head football coach, Coach George Harris, and our special guest today, Mrs. Harris. Welcome to the show, Mrs. Harris. Coach Harris, uh, we talked today after the defeat last night of the Bobcats in Victoria by a score of six to nothing to the Ganada Indians. I know it's always hard to sit down and, and do a show like this after a hard defeat like that. We're just going to kind of sit back and, and let you kind of recap last night's game and, and give us your points on what you saw from the coaching uh, situation on the sidelines. I guess going into the game, uh, I, I was I had a fear, you know. We, had, we were very emotionally high for the East Bernard game. We played a great game. And uh, I saw too many instances this year when – the next week, teams would lose. An example, uh, Weimer, Schulenberg had a big shootout the following week. Both Weimer and uh, Schulenberg were upset. I saw uh, Italy get very high and beat uh, the defending state champions. Uh, and then the next week, Italy was upset. And this was in the back of my mind all week, whether we could come back and play another great game. And, and, and we did play well in spots. Uh, in fact, we outgained them 100 yards in total offense. Uh, we had 17 first downs to their six, but we just made uh, critical mistakes at, at uh, very uh, crucial times. Defensively, take away two plays, and you might say we play a flawless game. You know, they ran a reverse for 50 yards. They complete that touchdown pass with 12 seconds before half, take those two plays away, and and we uh, completely control them as far as their uh, offense is concerned. Well, Coach Harris, you, you mentioned the score right before halftime. On that particular drive, there was two penalties that were crucial penalties at that point. I know you did take a timeout that right before the touchdown pass was completed. Did you kind of indicate to your defensive secondary to be looking out for a pass to Greg Lee or what yeah. was the call from the sideline? Uh, Coach McKinney went into a prevent defense and uh, of course we had told the kids all week that they were going to go to Greg Lee in, in big class situations and, and we had a man on top of him. His, his job was to bump him and then we were going to pick him up with our corner and and get help from our free safety. So 
so we had a little break down there, and Roman was more or less left on his own. Roman Smith, our cornerback. But at that point, they scored. They missed extra point. It's halftime. You go in from from the get go from the press box. We know you had made some adjustments as far as the offensive line. And I'd like to commend you and your coaching staff for the for the adjustments and the preparedness that you did to face Grenada. We noticed that uh, at times you had uh, Dan Sullivan and Adrian Gonzalez lined up on the same side. I guess you, that would be your strong side as far as your offensive line went. And you had your uh, tight end set up to that strong side. That was real noticeable against a big Grenada team. I, I know last week when we uh, sat here in Bobcat Corner, we talked about the size of the Grenada Indians on defense. Uh, what what made those changes possible? Who came up with uh, those adjustments? Of course, of course, Coach Rick Keys, uh, offensive line coach. Uh, coach Keys probably watched uh, at least a hundred hours of film in preparation for this game, and he felt like at certain times we'd be better matching up big on big, and and that's the reason we moved Dan Sullivan into the guard slot to match up with their big defensive tackle. You went in at halftime, like we mentioned, down. The score six to nothing. What did you tell your players in the dressing room at that point? Well, I guess the basic thing we told them is that we were going to have to win it up front. You know, the offensive line and the defensive line was going to to control the game. You came back real strong in the third quarter. Uh, once again, you went back to your basic running behind Sullivan, Nathan Gonzalez, and Joseph Bland. You used your strength up front. There was some real good positive yardage made with uh, Bisbee and Hollins there as far as your uh, running attack goes. Were you content to, to try to move the ball on the ground at that point in the well, third quarter? Uh, well, actually, we made 10 first downs in the second half. 10 of our 17 first downs came in the second half. And uh, at one point there, we moved Michael Brown to flanker, and, and they went into double coverage, which opened up the sweep, sweep to uh, Hollins. And uh, that was in the fourth quarter, I believe. But uh, yeah, we had some good blocking in the third quarter. We moved the ball, but here again we uh, broke down at crucial times. You mentioned uh, moving Michael Brown to the wideout, and Jason Garza came in to play quarterback for you. In the fourth quarter, uh, you were in a situation where you had control of the third quarter. You had moved the ball on him. You bring Jason Garza in at quarterback, and you open it up a little bit. As far as the passing attack went, I think uh, there was one time where you had two long attempts. They fell incomplete. Then uh, looking back at the film footage, is that kind of what you wanted to do at that stage in the ball game, down by a score six to nothing? Well, we just felt like you know we had to take that chance of, of moving the ball, and, and actually uh, we had a receiver wide open on one of those, and, and of course with the pass rush as it was, Jason did pick him up. That's neither here nor there now. Well, Coach Harris, uh, it's always hard to sit in a room like this and, and try to pinpoint what could have been the ifs of that ball game. But one thing about it, you look back at a very successful season. You're not going on to the semifinals. You you played into December. You lost to a Grenada team by a score of six to nothing, and you mentioned a few minutes ago you were on the positive as far as first downs went, total offense. You had some crucial penalties. You had some mental uh, breakdowns that I would say from uh, what I could see from the press box as we were doing the game. But Ganeda goes on now, plays a Groverton team this coming weekend. Yeah, and, and I, you know, Ganeda was sky high for this game. I, I'd be very surprised if if they play well against uh, the growth, uh, it, it really takes a special team to to stay up throughout the playoffs. That's what makes Texas football as it is, you know, so interesting. Well, we're going to close the uh, the conversation on on Ganada as far as they go. We got to kind of look back and, and let you kind of just take us through the season. What some of your good memories are of the 96 football season uh, started two a days back in August uh, you have a tremendous turnout I, I would say from what I saw
saw as far as the playoffs went. You moved up your JV players. What, your numbers as far as participant goes for the referral program, what was it when 2 days started? We had about 90 kids out, and, and the amazing thing was, you know, for a 2A school to, to have 27 seniors is, uh, uh, that is tremendous. Uh, had finished the season with 25 seniors. Uh, you know, we had a good year. Our freshmen uh, lost one game. Uh, they were 8-1. and one. Our JV was 7-2. and two. So uh, we've got some good athletes coming up. Our 8th grade uh, tied one game, so they had an outstanding year. I think we have 10 kids back off of our varsity squad, but we have some very capable people to move up from the freshman and JV. Well, the uh, local media has always given the referral Bobcats some kind of coverage. I know as the uh, season went on, you were always uh, headlined as far as the uh, on TV went in the newspapers, and especially here in the playoffs. You had some real nice articles that were uh, in the College Times. Uh, Mr. Teclo Garcia, the uh, local writer for the 3A below, had an article on Coach Marshall. And how's Coach Marshall doing at this point? Coach Marshall is doing much better. He's, he's still not able to go to the uh, football games, but uh, I talk to him each week on the phone, usually try to go by and see him. Uh, I think he is planning to hopefully be back uh, second semester at some point and, and take over his teaching position. He had the article on the uh, brothers situation. He had four sets of brothers, uh, very unique in itself there. Then this past week you had a real nice article that had some real nice comments on your part about James Hayward. And uh, that kind of coverage for a 2A program is outstanding. And that goes back to the tradition and the following that the referral Bobcats have had in the past years. As far as your uh, coaching situation in the past years, I know that I myself sit here and I, and I admire what you've accomplished in the uh, football programs that uh, you were involved with at Gregory Portland and now at referral. But also the track and field programs. Uh, I know from my days of attending high school, I remember Coach Harris as being one of the outstanding track coaches in South Texas. You, I think, uh, were one of the first coaches that took uh, back then Gregory Portland was 3A. You took Gregory Portland to the Border Olympics in Laredo. You got a lot of exposure for the uh, athletes in Gregory Portland. Now, at Referio, I know in the past years you won state with the girls program as far as track wins, is that correct? Yeah, in fact, we won six uh, state championships. Great memories for me. The uh, years that, that you uh, had your uh, son at Referio, that you were able to coach him, I believe, two years? Is that one year. One he, year? He, yeah, we were there only in 82, 83. He played the, the one year football and ran track. You uh, had uh, ex the years of being involved as far as the uh, track coach with him, and he had some outstanding accomplishments in track and field along with football, is that correct? Yeah, both of my kids uh, had excellent high school track careers and, and they both started at Gregory Portland in the summer track program when they were like five and six years old. Uh, grew up through the summer track program and of course my son finishing at Referio and my daughter here at Gregory Portland. Well, Coach Harris, looking back at, at those years and, and what's coming up, as you, you mentioned summer programs. That's something that's that's built a lot of track programs, and they contribute also to the uh, football season. But let's talk a minute about off season. Uh, come Monday morning, I would say you'll probably be checking in all your football equipment, getting ready for basketball season. What kind of program do you have at Referral as far as basketball goes? Well, Coach Gilbert Price is our our boys uh, basketball program, and. Even with us going as far as the uh, semifinals last year, he was still able to get into the, the basketball playoffs. Uh, lost in by a district, but I thought that was quite an accomplishment considering we had played football as long as we had. And he has a number of those starters back this year, so I expect to, I expect Referral to compete in the district very favorably. What kind of, uh, I have felt to ask you in the past, are you in the what we refer to, I guess, the block scheduling situation? No, we were in the block schedule last year, but we went back to our regular schedule this year. As far as the athletic period goes, you 
have them, the uh, athletes in there, uh, what, every day for yeah, an hour? Every, every day for 50 minutes, uh, fourth period, that's right before lunch. That, that helps our uh, spring sports in that, you know, we can work them hard during the athletic off season and, uh, and then they're rested up enough to come back and play tennis or baseball or tr run track in the afternoon. What kind of off-season program do you have at Referio? We have a pretty uh, intense off-season program. You know, we have a, an excellent weight program, and then we do a lot of work outside where we're involved in plyometrics, agility, running ropes, what have you. Well, I know that your off-season program uh, showed this year and as well as in the years past as far as your accomplishment goes in football. We, we mentioned basketball coach uh, Price. You said it's your uh, head basketball coach. Track and field, uh, what do you have this year as far as referral goes in the track and field? Well, coach David base? McKinney is our head voice track coach. And uh, uh, I expect our track program to be down a little bit, maybe depending on some of the younger kids this year probably. How about your baseball program? What y'all started baseball about three years ago? Yes, and, and we made it to the playoffs last year and, and we have a new baseball coach in Dave Plymel. He's a former college baseball coach, seven years experience in that field. Uh, so we expect him to do a great job with our baseball program. But we did lose uh, most of our baseball players graduated last year. We do have Jason Garza back who's a good pitcher. It seems like uh, the referral athletic program has shined in the past and will continue shining with basketball coming up and then track and field uh, in the spring and baseball. Who is involved now with your girls program as far as basketball and track goes? Uh, volleyball, basketball is, is uh, coached by Brett Knighty. He's uh, new in referral this year. Uh, has a, a very young, talented group of ladies. Uh, I expect in the next couple of years for them to really uh, come on in volleyball and basketball. Uh, track is coached by Alma Williams, one of my former sprinters at uh, Referio, and uh, she'll have a good team this year. Well, once again, Coach Harris, we, we'd like to thank you for taking time from a busy schedule every weekend as far as the playoffs went. We know that Come Saturday morning, you were preparing already for your next uh, week opponent. And it's uh, something that we enjoyed here at Bay Area Studios, being able to work with you because of all the years that we've known you, it, it gave me an opportunity to thank you back in this way of being your host for your show. Uh, Albert, you did a great job, and, and I appreciate uh, being a part of this. And, and I think people of Retrieval have really enjoyed the uh, telecast uh, being shown as it has. Well, it's been a great playoff run. Uh, Referral Bobcats will have a lot of great memories of the season because we were in attendance there a lot of the uh, games. The playoffs, we'll never forget Buccaneer Stadium when y'all first came onto the field. The play-by-play uh, -play for the uh, games, Mr. Stephen King made a comment the first time he saw y'all coming out on the field you were coming out in massive numbers and you played an outstanding game against Banquete. The following week we went to Beeville and we were there and you guys took on a strong Charlotte team and you came out victorious. Then we went to Victoria, your home uh, away from home as we refer to it from Bay Area Studios and you took on an East Bernard team that visited with Coach Harris the uh, week uh, before on Bobcat Corner. He was a little scared, Bobcats. He was a little scared of what you guys were going to face as far as these Bernard win. But you put it all together. Your preparedness was there. And the comments that Coach Harris made, you, you played a, a hard game. You came out victorious. You went on to play Ganada. And maybe you couldn't get up again like you had against these Bernard. But the memories are great for us as far as the playoff go. And Refrio fans, when you see the Bobcats out in the community, thank them for a great year because they gave you all a lot of thrills. You came out short as far as the score went 
against Grenada. They advance. But still, you are the tradition. You are the power of the mighty Bobcats. Coach Harris, we thank you for once again. This is Harris. We thank you for being here with us tonight. I'd like to close this out with uh, you've been viewing Bobcat Corner in Woodsboro and Refrio on TCI Cable Vision. And we hope to do this again. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ron Jorgensen, and I've been the producer and director for the Bobcat Corner and Bobcat Football shows this fall. I want to take this uh, time to, first of all, thank you for the opportunity of letting us do the Bobcat football this fall. Uh, of course, we came a little bit late into the uh, playoff season, but I think that the folks in uh, Refurio have definitely enjoyed it. At least that's the feedback we've gotten from you folks through TCI and the Booster Club and many of the sponsors. Second of all, we wanted to talk about next year. There were some questions that were asked me about doing this next year. And I wanted to address those in this form instead of on a one-on-one -on -one basis through the school or the coaches or the sponsors. And that it is strictly up to you, the sponsors and the citizens and the, and the people that are interested in Bobcat football if you want to have it done next year. There are some logistical problems that we need to take care of on a complete season basis. And that is that, that we do not have filmers, uh, people who can film all of the Bobcat games next fall. So someone interested in filming the games and going to the games would have to be found in Refurio. And other than that, we can train them and work with them to enable us to do that next fall. But I really wanted to come on and say thank you. We have never received such a warm welcome from any other town that we have worked in, such as we have in Refurio. It has definitely been a pleasure to work with you this season, and we hope to continue this relationship long into the future. For Bay Area Studios, have a happy holidays, and thank you very much. And now, for a little special treat.
Hanks Bobcats. And our final sponsor for tonight is Oscar de la Garza with Salon Salon, located at 1225 Airline Road in Corpus Christi. We appreciate his sponsoring this last game. And Advantage Publishing, Martha Lampson, all the way to state Bobcats in all the sports. And we thank you very much for watching and listening.